And the pens do all of the work And the best gets all the gravy Now the captains get the bars The generals get the stars The soldiers do the fighting And all they get is scars Now a baby cries for Hello! Welcome to another episode of 20th Century Adventures. I'm Nathan Logsdon, and today we're going to talk about pants. Uh, this is one of the hardest things to come up with in this hobby in this time period. And fortunately, just in the last six months, uh, a lot of new products have hit the market. And I really wanted to talk about this. I wanted to give people some good information. And so I'm doing a whole video reviewing trousers that I have purchased from various vendors. Uh, now, nobody gave me anything. I'm not uh, promoting any specific company. This is as unbiased of a review as I can possibly do. Uh, I paid full retail price for everything that I am talking about in this video. So, um, so take that for what you will. Uh, I hope that I can direct you to something that's good, uh, something that will improve your impression, uh, and that you'll be happy and comfortable wearing. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, right now I'm dressed uh, in as early as I can really pull together right now. Uh, this is uh, really suitable for uh, mid-1890s up to kind of pushing the envelope on 1915. Um, and, and so what we've got here, um, what I want to talk about mainly is the, is the pants, and I'll talk about some of the other items here as well. Um, but uh, blue jeans are just coming into to fashion. Um, the first patent for blue jeans was 1870-something, uh, I can't remember now. Um, but they're starting to be used for, uh, especially for working. Uh, originally, a lot of them went over your regular pants. Uh, they were meant to cover as an outer garment, and that dates back all the way to the 18th century when they would wear a canvas trouser, or they call it overalls. They weren't, they didn't have bibs, they were just waist pants. Uh, they, would care, they would wear those uh, or slops or something over their everyday clothes to protect them when they were doing something dirty. And that was the mentality in the 19th century. And then guys were, were thinking, hey, why don't I just wear these as pants? Uh, and so that really quickly developed into the blue jeans that uh, we would eventually become familiar with as our everyday wear. Uh, they're comfortable, they're useful, they're durable, and so uh, blue jeans became a thing. Now, <clears throat> this particular pair, these are kind of old, they've got some, some wear and tear on them, um, so I can really review these well and say that they do hold up. Uh, these are from Frontier Classics, and uh, they're kind of famous for doing cowboy western uh, clothing and and some of it is great and some of it's real questionable. Uh, I I encourage you to do your own research on anything else. But uh, speaking specifically of their denim trousers, uh, they have I think they have a striped version and an unstriped version. And uh, really for doing a late 19th, very early 20th century impression, uh, you you can't go wrong with these. Um, they do fit really well. Um, I, I, you have to measure these things from your belly button. Uh, the waist is very high on these period trousers. They didn't begin creeping down until the 1960s. And so uh, this is the natural waistline. So when you're looking at purchasing something, uh, you want to measure around where your belly button is, that circumference there, and that's going to be your waist measurement. And if you're buying something that is made overseas, you're really going to want to probably go up uh, at least one size on it. Um, so my waist measures 32. These are a pair of 34s, and they fit real well. Um, so what we're looking for in this is we're looking for that high waistline. Uh, these especially have a flap that covers the, the buttons of the fly, and that goes back, uh, gosh, to the mid... Uh, mid 19th century Civil War era easily. Um, so this was this carried on up into the 20s. You want this covered fly, uh, you want the high waistline, you're looking for a uh, buckle adjustment on the back, and uh, you're looking for not too many pockets. 
Um, so I've got one internal pocket on this pair, and that's very correct for that late 19th century period. Um, so again, and all these trousers, you don't have to worry about the inseam because almost everybody that sells historical jeans of any kind sells them in a standard, I think it's 36 uh, inch length, which is taller than most of us. And so you can hem them or you can roll them. Uh, these I actually chose to hem, and, uh, and I will eventually do that with some of my other pairs that I've recently purchased. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I, I left most of them as they were. But like I said, I've had this pair for a while. Now, I've paired this with a shirt that I have here uh, that I think may also be from Frontier Classics, although I can't remember and the tag's gone, so I, I really can't say. But um, I talk about shirts in, in another video that you'll find on my YouTube channel, uh, so you can learn more about this shirt and, and what that means. Uh, I've paired that with the leather braces that I carry on my website, logsandco.com. Um, so I'm kind of tooting my own horn on these, but I like them. They're useful and durable uh, and fairly comfortable, too. Uh, and again, uh, I'm wearing my uh, 1907, well, 18, 1890 to, to 1940 uh, working man's work boots. Um, and these are the ones that I redid. Uh, I, I polished them out in our video on how to take care of your period footwear. So that's this. Oh, the, the bowler hat. Uh, bowlers were popular from about the 1870s on up uh, into the early 20s. They kind of die out real fast after World War I, like a lot of things did. Uh, so you really don't want to do this past World War I, uh, but if you're doing a pre-war impression, uh, bowler hat, you can't go wrong with it. Uh, so this is my my look for uh, doing 1890 up to 1912, 1915. Uh, and like I said, we're really pushing the envelope by the time we get to 1915, but this would still be something that would be acceptable. And of course, if you're an older gentleman, you could certainly wear a slightly outdated fashion because that's still done today. Uh, so that's this, and uh, now we'll look at something else. So the next article that I want to talk about is this pair of trousers. Uh, these are made by Bronson Company, and uh, they're a company out of China uh, that are producing reproduction workwear and um, some odds and ends. They're, it's really interesting the, the variety that they have chosen to produce. Uh, some things are clearly teens and 20s, some things are 1940s. Uh, some things are workwear related, some are hunting related. It, it's kind of a, a mixed bag, and I can't speak for everything on the website as I usually do with all of these. Um, but I wanted to try out these trousers, uh, and and these actually have been my favorite overall out of all the ones that I purchased. Uh, they definitely have nailed the uh, the nineteen twenties look. Uh, these would be fine. Really, uh, you could go as early as 1915 on these, uh, and they work fine all the way forward into the 30s. Um, they're a nice, almost Wabash stripe. They're lightweight, uh, which I wouldn't want in winter t or in, in the winter time. But for summertime use, like today, it's it's just blistering hot. Uh, so these these trousers are real comfortable today. Um, they do fit really well. Uh, the fit is almost perfect on them. Uh, they've got a little gusset in the back here that you can adjust, uh, which, you know, this is something we look for on all of these, that, that in this period they should all have that uh, that strap across the, the lower back. Um, again, you want to measure around your belly button for these because they're high rise, and that's how they should be. Uh, so my belly button's right underneath of the pants button, and that's what you want. Um, can't stress that enough, that that's how you measure. So uh, I ended up still ordering one size bigger on their recommendation uh, because Chinese sizes run smaller than American sizes. It's just how their sizing system works. So uh, I ended up ordering one size bigger than I normally get uh, after measuring at the belly button, not my normal jean waist measurement, not what I normally wear in Levi's, 
but I measured here and then added one size, which is two numbers. So if you measure here, for example, I measure 32 right here, I went with a 34 and they fit like they were made for me. They're really great. Um, now I've paired these with suspenders that I sell on my website. Uh, they're, they're pretty cool. They are elastic uh, with other tabs. Elastic was just coming into being a thing in the 20s um, with the rubber mixed in with the uh, fabric. So, uh, so these are appropriate and I think they really go nicely with the rest of the outfit. Um, another thing I want to point out here is I have these shoes and uh, those of you who are of a certain age may recognize them as Chuck Taylors. Uh, well, long before there was Chuck Taylor, uh, well, not that long before, actually just a couple of years before, uh, the U.S. Army was trying to come up with a uh, athletic shoe, and they designed this with the U.S. Rubber Company and came up with this canvas shoe with a rubber sole uh, and some rubber reinforcements. And amazingly, these shoes are being reproduced today. So these on the on the side, the little marking here, actually says U.S. Rubber Company, and these are the, the 1916, uh, or 17, I think it was, maybe, uh, Army Issue version. Uh, I bought these from a company called Huckberry, and they are the U.S. distributor for these, so you really won't find them anywhere else in the U.S. but that website. However, uh, you can also find them on uh, stores in the U.K. on their websites, and if you shop around, you might actually get a better deal on the UK websites than on the US website. Uh, just how it works out, even with shipping and all. Um, but if you watch, Huckberry does occasionally put them dramatically on sale, which is why I have the green army issue ones. They also have a, uh, a an off-white uh, civilian issue one that has uh, kind of a natural tan colored rubber. And I really wanted those, but they were three times as much as the army ones that were on sale, so I bought the army ones. Um, but really, you wouldn't have these in this color unless they were Army surplus after 1927. So uh, I recommend, if you're using them for an earlier impression, uh, you know anything from World War One to 1927, and you want to wear these, uh, get the cream white ones if you can, because they'll actually be more appropriate. So, um, and then of course I'm I've just paired this with a shirt that uh, actually a really nice shirt. This is like a top end linen shirt that uh, has starched cuffs and a starched collar. And I found it at the thrift store, but I knew what I was looking for. If you want to find out what to look for at thrift stores like this, um, watch my video on uh, on shirts and you'll learn a lot about what to look for on that. So anyway, that's this outfit. Uh, wife made the hat. Uh, but any, any eight panel cap uh, would work really nicely for this period. So this is this is the Bronson trousers, and of all, I'm most happy with these. This is five stars all the way on these, uh, and the price was great. These were, uh, I think, about $60 uh, with shipping included, so uh, definitely a great way to go. So this pair was really a disappointment to me. Um, these jeans really are nicely built, um, but... They had some issues with their sizing, as you can see. These are way too small. Um, so this is the Red Tornado jeans. Uh, that's another Chinese brand. They are uh, real cheap uh, as far as the quality goes. Uh, they're they're really well matched to the uh, 1915 Levi's, uh, both the original and the reissue that Levi's did. Uh, but if you don't want to pay three or four or five hundred dollars for a pair of reproduction Levi's from Levi, uh, this is a good way to go. However, there's a few issues here. Uh, now they recommended, as, as all the Chinese manufacturers do, of ordering one size bigger. Uh, they also recommended um, that because of the washing, but they didn't say how much it would shrink in washing. Now I've washed these twice and I can barely get them on. Um, when I first put them on, they were a little snug, and now they're really tight, especially when it's hot and sweaty out right now. Um, so definitely, if you go that route, you want to go up several sizes 
uh, maybe two sizes bigger than your measurement. Uh, as you can see, the waist is not quite as tall as I would like it to be. My belly button is right here. Uh, so these really don't have the rise. I think these are made for people who want a modern look but want the vintage jean style as well. So uh, it's really kind of disappointing because the construction is phenomenal. The fabric is heavy duty. Uh, the stitching is fantastic. Uh, the attention to detail in, in making them as historically accurate as they can without getting sued by Levi is brilliant. Um, really, I would give these five stars if it weren't for the fact that I think they're just a little too modern cut. Uh, the, the legs are definitely not as wide as they should be. The rise is not where it should be. Um, and, uh, and, and then, of course, they shrink so much that you would have to order at least two sizes bigger. Um, so, unfortunately, these totally fail. Uh, but as far as quality, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, and, and certainly quality for value. I think they're great. Uh, I think these are about $80, which is more than, it was the most expensive pair of all the ones I purchased, um, but they uh, they just aren't good for reenacting. Uh, I'll probably end up handing these down to my son, who's going to be 14 soon. Uh, he can wear these better than I can, and he'll look good doing it, and uh, so that's, that's where these are going to go. Now, uh, I am also accessorizing these with a, uh, a basket weave belt here. Uh, suspenders are starting to go out in the uh, the third or the second quarter of the 20th century. So once you pass 1925, you're really starting to to lose as much attention on suspenders. They're still being worn, but not uh, the way that belts are coming in. And so belted jeans are kind of a thing, and uh, a basket weave belt is so timeless. It's hard to go wrong with that. Uh, these definitely fit the whole span of our period. And you can find them, I think, you know, on eBay, 30 or 40 bucks for a good uh, quality basket weave belt. So, um, so again, we do have the, the gusset on the back here, or the strap. So they've got that right. All the shape of the pockets and everything looks good. If you compare these to, to the, the 1915 Levi's, I mean, they are just spot on. Um, but the, the the rise isn't there and the width of the legs isn't there. So that's these. Moving on. So next up, we have this fantastic pair of breeches. Uh, these are made by What Price Glory, and they are the uh, M1912 pattern uh, U.S. Army uniform breeches. These are the winter breeches, so they're pretty heavy wool. Uh, if you're looking for summertime wear, you probably want the cotton version, which they also carry on their website. Um, but I wanted something that I could use this winter too, and so I opted to purchase the wool ones. Uh, it's a very coarse wool, and it is very itchy, uh, but I'll be wearing wool thermals underneath of it that are a much finer wool, and uh, those don't itch. And so that'll be the barrier that I need between um, the, the coarse, rough wool that's itchy and my skin. Um, so. Uh, this is, is definitely falling into the category of late 20s because it's army surplus. Uh, these breeches weren't surplused out until 1927. And so um, that's something that you, you wouldn't have had necessarily as early on in the period. Um, I paired it with this um, shirt that's one of my prototypes. I hope to eventually be able to carry these pullover style shirts in a variety of fabrics, uh, but we haven't gotten there yet. Um, I'm wearing our sportsman boots. These are available on my website, logsandco.com, and uh, I think they really give it the look. These are not a military boot at all. These are a civilian sportsman boots, um, but if you're going for a sportsman look, this is certainly all suitable materials, and we have seen photographs of people wearing these exact garments. Uh, out in the woods. So definitely was being done, no doubt, in the, the 20s and 30s. Um, I see a lot of these campaign hats even earlier. I think a lot of guys brought them home with them after World War I uh, because I've seen photographs of people wearing the campaign hats way too early for it to be surplus. Uh, and these these campaign hats uh, also did predate World War I and uh, it could have been that somebody who mustered out before World War I 
may have uh, had access to one or, or some of the early ones may have been surplus earlier. I'm not really sure. Um, but definitely it's safe to, to assume that by 1927, some things, some things that are military surplus, and I could be wrong that you guys that are military experts can say, hey, you, you messed up that one because uh, this is clearly, you know, surplused out in whatever date. Um, but I know that by 1927, pretty much everything that was made for World War I was beginning to get surplused. Uh, so we know that that's a firm date that we can say, okay, by this point, everything is available. Uh, and some things may have been available earlier. Do your own research on that. Um, so uh, the campaign hat, I think I bought it from a, um, a museum gift shop, actually, uh, in French Lick, and uh, it was around $50. And I've seen them other places, even online, for about the same. I think even Amazon carries the same hat online for about $50 or $60. And uh, this one actually sat uh, in my car for quite a while and got nicely sun faded. Um, and I've used it outside and it's gotten rained on and everything. So it's not as green as they start out. They start out real green, but they do fade to this nice uh, brownish green color with a little bit of time and use. Um, so the the trousers, they're a little pricier in the wool. Uh, I think they're around $160. Uh, and then the, the cotton ones, I think are around $90 to $100, somewhere in there. And uh, What Price Glory has those. And I can't say enough great things about What Price Glory. Uh, the owner of the company is fantastic. It's an American company. Uh, I'm not sure where their products are made. Uh, you'd have to ask them that. But Jerry Lee, who owns What Price Glory, is just a fantastic individual. So uh, always happy to spend money with him. And I know that the money's going to his family. So that's great, too. So same way with me. Um, I try to avoid sending too much money overseas. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I did buy a lot of uh, Chinese-made clothing. Uh, just because I wanted to try it out and be able to give an honest review so that somebody doesn't end up spending money on something they don't want or isn't going to work for them. So that's why I did those things. But I was actually su surprised, pleasantly surprised, with some of the quality on the Chinese products. Uh, and the price is great. So, uh, But do, whenever possible, try to support the American companies, even if they're you know, getting some of their stuff overseas. Uh, I know there's some settlers that, that get their stuff made overseas, but most of that money is going back to the families that are here in America. Um, so support them. They're small. They appreciate it. So anyway, that's this outfit. Uh, this would be fantastic in the woods. Uh, it'd be fantastic for motoring, motor camping, going hunting, going fishing. Uh, I will say, those of you who are hunters ought to know this, but uh, don't wear blue if you're hunting because blue is actually a color that animals see really, really well. So if you want to see wildlife, don't wear the blue shirt um, and don't wear white because that's also a color that they can see and it signals to them danger. Um, so, but you, can, you can't go wrong with any shade of red or green or gray or whatever uh, on, on your shirt if you're out hunting. Uh, those won't bother the animals as much. And if you go with a pattern, it breaks up your silhouette, which is even better. Uh, but all that for another video. So there's this, and we'll move on right, to something else. This is else. our last look of the day. And boy, you want to talk about comfort. This is it. This is amazingly comfortable. And uh, the shirt is even flannel, and I'm not burning up as bad as I thought I would with this on. Um, real comfy clothes. Uh, so these pants are also from What Price Glory. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Jerry Lee does a fantastic job. Uh, really like his stuff, and he's a nice guy. These um, these are the M1919 trousers, uh, or blue jeans, I think they call them. Uh, so these were work fatigues that uh, were made after World War I uh, for the purposes of, you know, building bases and things like that. They found that jeans work out real well. So these were actually a military pattern. Now. There's nothing on it that specifically says this is military, uh, and the military was using a civilian pattern to begin with. So really, it's fine to use these for civilian use. No problem whatsoever on that. Um, they are a little extra roomy uh, in the legs, which feels good, um, but uh, I, I feel like they're a little bulkier than, than I would care for. Um, but I've seen plenty of photographs in the period where... Um, they're wearing jeans and pants that are quite wide, especially work clothing. 
Uh, so I don't see anything wrong with it historically. Um, it's just that uh, me personally, uh, I prefer a slightly closer fit, which is why I liked the Bronson jeans uh, the best. Um, but these are really, really comfortable. And you absolutely cannot beat the price. I think they're $50 a pair on their website. Uh, they're real cheap. Uh, you can order them in your actual size measure at the belly button, of course. Um, but uh, these are actually 32s, which is what my waist measures. Uh, and the same way with the uh, World War I wool breeches, uh, those also were 32s. So uh, you can trust the sizing on, uh, on what price glory stuff. But again, my waist measurement at the hips is not the same as my waist measurement across the belly button. So make sure you measure there because that's where these pants are going to ride. Um, and, and if you're good there, order on what price glory, exactly whatever size you measure at your belly button, you'll get a great pair of pants. Uh, so two for two there. Uh, totally excited with the products that I see there. Uh, I've paired it with this shirt, um, which I haven't washed yet, so it's a little bulky. I always get them a little bit big because these cotton shirts shrink up a lot. And I haven't had a chance to wash this shirt yet. Um, but this shirt actually came from Bass Pro Shops. And it is spot on for an early 20th century post-World War I shirt. Uh, it's fantastic. It's got all the features that I'm looking for in a uh, hunting sportsman sort of shirt. Uh, some of those styles are timeless. I mean, once we got past World War I, uh, especially with shirts, not much has changed except for collar points and cuffs. And uh, even that has been very minuscule. Um, so this is a brand new shirt. They're twenty dollars. Uh, you can get them from your local Bass Pro Shop, or you can get them online uh, on on their website, and they'll ship it to you or ship it to a store. Um, so if they don't have your size, which they didn't, when I went to look for one, they didn't have any of my size. Uh, so I had to order mine uh, online. I picked it up at the store, so I didn't pay any extra for shipping. Um, can't beat it. I mean, this is great. Now this hat, I really like this hat. Again, super comfortable, just perfect fit, really comfortable. Uh, this hat is made by the Chris LaRose Hat Company. And uh, look this guy up. He's uh, not only a wonderful individual, uh, he's a fantastic musician and uh, really killer at sewing clothes. Uh, one of these days I hope to be able to afford to get one of his chore coats that he makes out of uh, Wabash striped denim. Uh, makes some really nice, high quality stuff and it's all made in the usa uh mostly by his hand and uh he, he really does a wonderful job uh, and i think his hats run about 50 or 60 bucks if i remember correctly uh he may have to correct me on that um because i this one i think may have been a second and i think that's about what i paid for it so some of them might be a little more expensive depending on what you want and what materials you want because he'll make them out of wool and whatever else and i think those are more expensive as well um, but you can't go wrong with one of these hats from Chris the Rose Hat Company. Uh, and then again, I'm, I put my shoes with it. Um, and this is a belt that uh, actually a local guy made. Uh, it's tooled with hunting scenes and wildlife around it. And I felt like it was a great hunting belt. And I have seen similar belts um, in collections of uh, sporting goods and things like that. So I feel like it's acceptable for uh, somebody who likes to be in the woods. Um, now this is not necessarily woods clothes. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to go hunting with this much blue on. Uh, the deer would see me, the squirrels would see me, uh, nobody would come near me. Uh, so I wouldn't go hunting with this, but if it was maybe a cool fall day and I wanted to go fishing, uh, or if I was, uh, you know, just working around camp, splitting firewood, uh, nice roomy, comfortable clothes are good for working in. Uh, so I would I would definitely enjoy that aspect um, if I was working on my car or uh, or even if in the period I was going to work at the local gas station or whatever job I had or I'm a pipe fitter or whatever in that period uh, this this was a great just general purpose everyday wear anybody from uh, probably 1925 up to 1940 could wear this and not be out of place at all. Um, so those of you that do a little later period, but are still interested in watching my videos, if you're doing thirties or forties, uh, you can still go with this outfit and, and fit in real well. So again, these are the what price glory jeans with a Bass Pro shirt and a Chris LaRose hat, logs and shoes.
thanks guys i really hope you've had as much fun with this as i have it's been great to play dress up and uh talk about all these things and uh, this has been a fun experiment so if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe because that's going to keep me making more videos guys so really appreciate it feel free to share thanks we'll see you next time and she loved a sailor, and he loved her too. Now second couple separate around the outside go. You know when you meet your partner, you swing her to and fro. Now swing her in the center, six ends all around. And swing her, swing her, swing her back to town. 